everybody, welcome to Everything Money Channel with your Uncle Paul and Seth here. We're looking today at Chewy. Uh, Chewy is a pet pet store, <laughs> pet food place out of Florida. We welcome you into the show. We're going to use our eight pillar analysis to look at this shop. It's been in the news a lot. And Paul, I know we're going to go with this because if you look at that stock chart, look up. It's going up. It's always going to go up. We should buy, buy, buy. I don't know why, Paul. We should do this because a lot of other YouTubers, they just put 10x Don, our producer, you know this. You just put 10x, 5x, 3x your money. We'll have pictures of you holding a bunch of cash because this stock is going to the moon. Am I right, Paul? Of course not. So first off, Chewy is an awesome company. Tell me why. Don and I use Chewy. Go on. I, they're, they're great for customer service and buying and returns. I mean, they're, they're a phenomenal company. So I do, I do suggest that for any pet owners to go to Chewy to um, buy your stuff. But what about the financials, Paul? Should we look at that or just buy, buy, buy like everyone else? Of course we should look at it. Okay, tell me about it. So first off, it is a $44 billion market cap. So what that means is if you were to buy the company right now in full, buy all of its outstanding shares, it'd be $44 billion. That is how I look at companies. I don't look at companies as a share price. Look at the total amount of the market cap because the share number of shares outstanding, as you'll see later, can be changed by issuing more shares or buying back shares. So at the end of the day, what matters is what we're paying for the full company. Pillar, now, pillar number one is PE ratio. We want this less than 20. Paul. It is an X because they don't make money. Does that mean we're avoiding it? No, it is a moment of caution. Just like everything with the eight pillars, no single pillar will make or break an investment. But right now they don't make money. That could be because they're trying to grow, et cetera. So of course their profit margin is an X as well. This is pillar number two. We want the profit margin above 10. It is negative 1.84 X. Their gross margin is 25%, which is about where Amazon and Walmart are. That uh, high, you think? Yeah, I think Amazon has a 25% margin on their retail side. Walmart's definitely 25%. Right, so, so far, we have two Xs. Let's take a little deeper into their revenue growth over the past few years. Revenue growth. Pillar number three, Paul. Okay, revenue growth is going to be huge. 900 million to 4.3. Wow. Check mark there. How about profit? What is growth? this? Wait a second. Go they went from ahead, 900 million down to 120 million, then up to 1.2 billion. That's weird. Something happening here. Obviously, something happened there. Pillar number four is profit growth. Okay. This is an X because it went from losing 107 million to losing 252 million. Oh boy. And they're still losing money every year. They Remember, the present value, the, the, uh, an investment is worth the present value of all the future cash flow. They might be working towards positive cash flow, like Amazon did. Amazon didn't make money, but three or four quarters over a 17 year period, they started printing money. Mm -hmm. If they're reinvesting all of their profit into more and more growth, that could be a good thing. So it's not, so far I'm not excited, but again, there's other issues that could be in play here that are beneficial to the company. The, the fans would know if you're excited with those tight pants on. Let's go to pillar number five, which is These number of tight. shares. They're, they're super tight, Paul. Number, super tight? number of shares outstanding. They're, they're always tight in the buttocks region. You know that. Number of shares outstanding. Ooh. We want this going down, Paul. Uh, X, 395 million to 398 million. Oh, I woke boy. up very sore today from my workout yesterday. I well, did a lot of leg stuff. I've told you on previous shows, you look shredded nowadays. And you should I be very proud. Shredded, yes, you do. It. A pillar number six is, so they're selling shares? Yeah, so they're, oh, they're selling more shares than X there. Pillar number six is current assets greater than current liabilities, Paul. Their current assets, which is basically their cash on hand. Um, it's, actually more than, it's actually more than that, but for right now, we'll just call it their cash on hand. 1.13 billion and the current liabilities of 1.3 billion. So that's uh -oh. an X there, guys. Oh, yeah, that's not good. I was actually surprised by that. I this doesn't it was... happen that often, Paul. No, it doesn't, especially for an internet retail company, but oh well. How about free cash flow, which is pillar number seven, Paul? Annual free cash flow on, on, on... guys, they've only had one year of free cash flow. So, oh, they haven't even had one year of free cash flow, but this is a definite check mark still because it went from um, 15 million, negative 15 million to a negative 2 million. So it's a check mark still. But there's still no free cash flow, guys. Um, our, so, pri our price to free cash flow would not be a good it'd number be an as, X well. as well. Because there is no free, mm. there's, there's no free cash flow, you can't have a price to free cash flow. So your take-home thoughts on Chewy. So guys, everything in a company is about the present value of the future cash flow. You have to model out. You have to sit there and just say, where, how are they going to grow? What are they going to do? Um, it's hard when there's a lot of losses. My recommendation for a $44 billion company. The way I look at it is, can you buy another company for around $44 billion that would be a 
less speculative play. You have to have a lot of things work out for Chewy, especially competing with Amazon and Walmart, all these other big retailers when it comes to, I mean, I always tell people, you can buy a $100,000 watch on walmart.com right now. If you don't believe me, go look up a Petek Philippe or a Rolex. You'll find it on walmart.com. It's not Walmart selling it, it's they're selling it through resellers. So Chewy's trying to be its own company that just sells specifically their own products, not like Amazon, which has third-party sellers. I'm not saying no, but at $44 billion, you have to have a really, really good story and a really, really direct line to profit to be interested in this company at this price. I think this is an avoid right now. Um, let me put it in my little Excel. What's the ticker symbol? I don't even have a price for the company right now. It's in the negative territory because there's not enough information and there's too much negative. Uh, there's not enough growth. I mean, there's... There's not enough data for me to even run it through my model right now. Paul, the comments we get on a lot of our videos of these quote unquote growth stocks is that you're just wrong. You don't understand where this company's going. Great. That could be the case. But a lot of times what people are looking at when they see growth, they're looking at the stock price growth. I don't look at the stock price growth. I look at the company's financial growth. A growth company is because their financials are growing, not because the stock is growing, right? And growth is an important aspect in value investing, which you'd like to do. Because at the end of the day, I'm assuming growth levels when I determine my value of the company. When I put it in that model, there's a certain growth percentage that I'm assuming as part of that model. Does that mean I'm going to be right? No, absolutely not. And it, will I be boring? Sure. But at the end of the day, my job is to maximize my revenue and profit for every dollar I, I invest. And here, I think it's just too much of an unknown here, $44 billion. I think there's a lot of other companies you can buy for around $40 or $50 billion that would be a better more secure play. Because remember, maximum returns isn't the only goal you should have. It should be maximum returns with a lot less downside risk. This has a lot of downside risk, right? So when you're not making money, the only way you're going to make money is through growth of stock. What happens when there's all of a sudden no growth in stock and the company's losing money? How are you making your returns then? You're not. There's no dividend happening here. There's no free cash flow. It'd be very, very difficult. Imagine there's a major recession. Chewy's got nice stuff on there. People are going to start maybe cutting back and spending less money buying less nice things for their pets, et cetera. It's just a theory out there that I have. I'm not saying I'm 100% right. I'm not saying 100% wrong. It's just the way I like to invest and the way I'm trying to teach it is by looking at the long-term prospects of the business and determining what's a good risk-reward scenario today for that. And I think Chewy is too, much of a risk, a, a too high of a risk for the reward potential. But it is getting better, as we saw from the free cash flow. It went from $15 million loss to $2 million loss. In, that, in fact, let's go look at the recent quarters. Let's, I forgot to do that. Did you just spit? I thought I, I saw did, spit like just times. fly through the like air. Like three times. Nate, did you see it spit flying? Oh, look at this. Go on. Their last quarter, $33 million in free cash flow, guys. Come on now. There we go. They might be turning the corner here. It's still not enough. Even if they did 33 a quarter for the next four quarters, that's $132 million. And they're selling for $43 billion. That's still 30 time, 300 times free cash flow. That's still too much. Mm -hmm. We're trying to be under 20 or around 20. Maybe you pay 30 times for Chewy. It's still 10 times too high. Oh boy. So I just think it's just too much right now. Wait for a big pullback in the stock price. If you like the company, love the company, more power to you, but it's just way too expensive. If you're drawn to this analysis, visit our Patreon. The link is below. It's patreon.com slash everything money. Uh, you can jump on and talk to Paul on a daily basis to cover your portfolio, his portfolio, and everything we're trying to do on the channel. And as always, uh, we appreciate your comments below. If we're missing something with Chewy, go ahead and yell at Paul down, down below in the comments. And you can comment on how svelte and uh, sexy I look, Paul, I would assume. By the way, go on. When, people, when you say the, the handsome guy, the more handsome guy, like, and people say the handsome one, I'm like, who are they talking about here? <laughs> we do get a lot of comments. I'm pretty sure they're about me. If you've watched this far, we do get a few comments of like that guy that keeps interrupting, he sucks and get rid of him. So Paul, I think one no, I didn't show- No, I wasn't talking about the interrupting guy. I was talking about the handsome versus handsomer guy. Yeah, so I usually comment back with something like, is it the handsome guy or the more handsome guy or is it the ugly guy or the handsome guy? I leave it very open. Um, but yeah, so we'll do one show with just Paul. You guys can see what that uh, train show will look like. Or, or not train show, what am I saying? Train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for uh, make sure you guys tickle that like button and uh, we appreciate the subscribe and join us for the 70 some odd videos we do every single day here on our YouTube, not every day, but every week. Every day at 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. we release a video seven days a week, some sort of video about some sort of analysis of something. We've been doing this for over two years and we'll continue to do so just for you. Make sure yep. you like and subscribe. We love you guys. Thanks.